everybody. I'm Jeff Apodaca. And I am Eric Strauss. And there's no doubt I'm the best looking one on set. Oh, of course. Come on. You know You're really going to start with this today? Absolutely. Anyway, welcome today to Today we are going to no, meet no, no. in the middle, not on that for sure, but go ahead. But today we're thing. going to be talking about immigration. But before we start that, uh, last night I was at home yep. and, um, oh, it's football season. Hard Knocks on <laughs> HBO. I started watching it last night. Raiders, baby. Why? That is Raiders. not. Tell me that's not your team, right? Raiders. Absolutely. Gruden. So I'm a Steelers fan, so you can imagine my uh, contempt for Raider Raider. Well, when Nation the Raiders right and the Pittsburgh Steelers are going because at they it, had I, was steal, a, I was right? a Cowboy fan back yeah. then. I'm amazed that Antonio Brown wanted to go to that team. I would, he with, fits with, the with, mentality perfect. Let me Carr, tell you that. I think, with Carr, I think it's going to be say, great. Does that say enough? I think it's going to be great. So you're telling me the mentality of the Raiders and Raider you just, Nation you just have to is say, something you embrace. Absolutely. You just okay. have to, you have to right. win, win. You know, the only time just I win, felt baby. unsafe just win, at a baby. national football game, I took my son to see the Chargers and the Raiders play, and I think there was three stabbings, and okay. so, I, it was the only time I literally went to the bathroom with my son and pulled him closer because one dude's drinking Everclear out of a Ziploc baggie okay. next to me. It was anarchy, literally. Okay. So and if I, I'm wrong it, on this, no, no. As you know, I had season. I, I lived in LA, so I had yeah. season tickets to the so Raiders. Come on, no, no, no. It, I, I'll admit, some of the Raider Nation You'll fans can be a little over so the top. So we can, we can definitely come to the middle of the kookiness. Of I the think Raiders. so. I think so. But you're still a Raiders fan. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, the classiest organization in football, Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm not going to argue that point because they're pretty classy. <laughs> so what else is going on? But in your everybody's world? a Dallas what Cowboy is... fan in this town. No, uh, not really. It's about 50. 50. Oh my gosh, there are so many. It's about 50 percent Cowboy here. fans, and then it's 25 percent Broncos. 25 let me tell you why Cardinals. you don't know that. Because I you're used only to be a Cowboy fan, by the way. Listen, the only time you'll see Cowboy gear is if they're winning. That's not true. That's so true. That's not true. <laughs> yes, it is. Anyway, hey, another, you'll see the stars another thing, since you don't want to yeah. tell me what's what's going on in your world. Uh, my world. Uh, radio show. I'm I'm six to eight p.m. right now. Uh, I do the weekends, so okay, I'm working KLB. seven days a yeah. week. So my world's a lot of work, uh, trying to balance that with the kids, the wife, and uh, everybody's back to school. My son's first day back. He goes to Ames Charter School. Thrilled with that school. Uh, Mark, Kathy, the principal there, is phenomenal. I I have been really just privileged and blessed that he's there. Really well, our feel kid, good. Well, our kids, uh, one, uh, they go to APS, so they don't start for a couple of weeks, but mm -hmm. I think our kids are getting pretty excited about it. One, That's cool. One pur colored his hair purple. Here's, the, here's what's amazing to me is uh, Sunday. See, you and I disagree on the purple hair. Uh, I thought it looked cool. Like Jedi mind trick. No. I thought it looked cool. I, I, my, I think I'm okay with that. My kid tried that for about two hours, I think, to do a blue streak. He bounced the idea off me, and that got squelched pretty readily. Well, let me let me tell you the topic, which is yes. unbelievable. Yeah. I, have a, I have a conversation with my now to be fifth grade sons, but I took them to a movie the other day, um, Hobbs and Shaw, by the way, which is a pretty cool entertaining. Oh yes, it's a yes, cool yes. Entertaining Violent, show. violent uh, Hollywood. Yes. PG thirteen, yeah. man. PG thirteen. But anyway, because uh, so we're know, at the movies. Guns, no, but I'm talking to my. Shooting, I'm, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's an action flick. But I'm, I'm talking to my. <laughs> I'm talking to my boys, and you know. I'm giving you hard. And time. it's been about ten days from the El Paso shooting, so we mm -hmm. send our thoughts and prayers to our friends down Absolutely. in Las Cruces and El Paso. Yep. But um, but one of the things I talked to my sons about is, um, which is unbelievable, that fourth and fifth graders. And I said, guys, if something like this happens to you at the movie theater at school, you know, what do you do? And my sons both said, oh, daddy, you, you get down and you hide and you act like you're dead, because dad, if you start screaming and running around, the shooter's going to shoot you. And it's sad that in this world today. See, is that what they're training them though? I don't know, but my sons have said, well, dad, me and my friends, we all talked about it. We're going to lay, we're going to act like we're dead, because I. Man, I'm torn on that, Oppo. Well, I told them. I said, I'm, I'm I said, more you of the if you hear shots fired, run your ass off. Well, and get but out they're of there. they're just afraid. Rear and I, I I said you guys get out. Sure. It's safe. And if there's and if there's a teacher there or there's an adult there, or I'm with them. But you know, we went to the movie theater the other day. We literally picked seats on the last row. You really thought about it. I thought this. about it, man. I, I went to Come the last on. row. I'm telling you, I went to the last row, picked the last Come row. Come on. No, I did. Picked the last row, and we strategize. And anytime someone walks into the movie, as a I, dad, I'm watching out okay, for Okay, I don't mind an exit strategy, but I'm not going to live my life paranoid. I, look, I, I'm not saying I, I'm paranoid, I had by a, the way. I had a guy call me, and he said he was worried now about living in America, right. and he was a Mexican immigrant. And I want to talk about that story. When we well, come we're going back. to talk about yeah, immigration absolutely. today. And today's show is going to be about immigration and the wall. And we have Senator Jerry Otiz Pino with us and Robert Godshaw. So I think it's going to be great. Yeah. Let's meet in the middle.
Boom. In a time of a divided America, two people from different points of view sit down to talk about the problems, to talk about ideas, to talk about life, and to find common ground. It is now time for Let's Meet in the Middle with your hosts, Eric Strauss and Jeff Apodaca. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle. Jeff Apodaca, Eric Strauss. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at House770Strauss. You can find me on Facebook at uh, New Mexico or NM Minute or Democrats for Democracy. Uh, we talk about issues and policies all the time. And, uh, and we also have a Facebook page for this show, Let's Meet. Let's Meet in the Middle. At Let's Meet in the Middle, right, NM. I think it's NM. Yeah, Let's yeah. Meet in the Middle. Yeah, you'll find us so, on Facebook. Yeah. Or if you want to email us, uh, Meet in the middle, nm at gmail.com. And we're going to broadcast live every time we do the show, and we're going to try to take some of your questions and comments. Uh, some people said don't talk when you're off air, but the, the Facebook program is going to be kind of fluid and organic, uh, different than the program. So, right, right, right. So people so, need to understand right. that. Uh, what, do we need to thank any sponsors at this point? Well, we want to thank P&M yeah. for being one of our sponsors, Indigo Mortgage and Ryan Sewing and Vacuum. Yeah. Uh, they're some of our early sponsors, so thank you guys. Yeah, they, they put a lot of trust and faith in us, and we hope that we live up to that. Well, and then we have to. We always got to talk about the kitchen because that's where we meet for breakfast pretty much yep. once a week now. Yep. Uh, the Kitchen 135, best chicken fried green chili uh Christmas. Chris, no, Christmas. Green, green chili. Christmas chicken We're fried steak and eggs. Anymore. Egg over anyway, medium. Today's topic. Let's get to today's topic. Today's yes. topic is about immigration. And We've I'm, had many conversations correct. on this. Um, you know, uh, you and I went back and forth. Um, I think we agreed on one thing: is when our governor pulled our national guard um, off the off the fences, she didn't call it as a crisis. Um, well, I think none I, of them did. None well, of the, I think, the Democrats were lining up to say Trump's exaggerating the problem. Well, and I think and back the, then, I think back then we were looking at more of immigrant workers coming over, and then literally in the last eight months, twelve months, and we agree to this that that now we're seeing asylum seekers from Central America. It's really not Mexicans coming over, so we do have. But a crisis. if you want the irony in that, uh, Uruguay and Venezuela just issued travel. <laughs> Warnings for, warnings the US. for the U.S. Right. <laughs> but, but, but one of the debates. Tell you, but hold on. One of the debates. No, but one of the debates. If you have million of your people fleeing your own country, I think it's a little hypocritical to issue a travel debate to to America. Well, but I think you got to understand. A little, but you little gotta, gut reaction. But you got to understand there. something. Like, yeah. You know, you've been sitting there talking about how we should build a wall, and and President Trump ran on building a wall, and I've been saying from day one. And first of all, in half the property down there, a wall won't even stand up, in some of the areas. Um, I would agree with you. One thing we do can meet in the middle on is I do think there's about 700 miles of security walls that we should build or that we okay. need and on I, that. I want to take wall off the table like that's because everybody get locks into that. On that. I don't care what it is. To me, I get that people are going to go over it, under it. An artist even did. So there's already wall going up or steel barrier, if you will. And an artist did pink teeter-totters where the kids could teeter-totter on each side of the wall as right. like an art ex as exhibition. But again, it's very one, of the, thing, one but of the things, my, gonna, but my thing is it's a symbolic gesture to say to the world, look, okay, so we but, have immigration laws, we have a process, please follow them. What, is that so bad as a neighbor to say that? I'm not, I'm, and there's people down in Deming in Lordsburg in the southern western part of our state that want a wall, that want security down there because well, they, they, they are seeing drug dealers, they are seeing human trafficking, and we're not talking about that. Right now, the crisis that we're dealing with right now is the, uh, the migrants that are coming over for asylum seeking. And I personally think, and we've talked about this, I personally think it's basically because of a lot of our government policies that we're doing or that we've cut back in Central America. Um, I believe in work visa programs. I believe in open trade programs. Um, and I, I think the biggest issue we have, and I, and I think El Paso is an example, and we'll disagree with this, but um, having a president tweeting out I mean, the president, the day the president is going to El Paso, he tweets out and starts degrading Beto O'Rourke because his family calls him Beto, even though we know he's not Hispanic. But my parents are, are friends with his parents and his grandparents. They've called this kid Beto since he was a kid. That's his hey, nickname. But, but if you're defending Beto O'Rourke. I'm, I'm not defending Beto O'Rourke. I'm, which I'm, is Robert. I'm his condemning, name is what? I'm condemning Robert Donald Francis. Trump. I'm condemning, Robert Francis? I'm condemning Donald Trump. Okay, but condemn Beto. Going, for saying that Trump, they're blaming the shootings on Trump. 
They're poking they're the grizzly blaming bear. Some of the rhetoric. No, they're, they're blaming, blaming some Trump of the rhetoric. Trump is a racist. Well, Black and white, he said it. Rhetoric, some of Trump his, is some, a, Trump is a racist. Trump is a racist. Trump, this this culture of hatred that Trump has created, that's why we have these killings, and that's ridiculous. Okay, so are you that's ridiculous? Are you telling me you're okay with Donald Trump's tweets? I'm not okay with anything Donald Trump tweets. I mean, seventy eight percent of Americans, wish, Democrats and Republicans, wish, are tired of his tweets. I, listen, I wish he'd just keep his mouth shut and right. lead the country. Right. But that's that's not going to happen. That's not that New York. It's like you have a term in the Hispanic community called machismo. Mm-hmm. Okay, a, a teacher was just grilling machismo Hispanic students for bullying um, the LGBTQ plus community. She says it happens. She works in the dual language program, and these machismo Hispanic kids berate each other over "you're gay," "you're this," "you're that," and they berate each other. And that was a big issue that came up because this machismo community. If you poke a machismo guy, and and you talk about sexism. Right. And you talk about there are problems in the Hispanic community that run deep. And in terms of that machismo okay. attitude. So what you're seeing is you're seeing the New York version. I'm trying to get you to understand Trump's persona it, in the machismo community. If I look at you the wrong way, that could be a sign that I want to fight you. Uh, I, 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 OK, I, but that's I'm gonna, true. I'm gonna, as a Hispanic, okay. I'm going to totally disagree. Well, with you that know, because that, that's that. You, no, I, I mean, mean I, I don't think the way you look at me. I mean, I think oh. there might be a, a part of our culture. Oh, it's part. That it's, might be that way. But let me tell you something. But hold on. To, to compare so that to Donald Trump. But, but to what you're that seeing to is Donald Trump. You're seeing that machismo attitude Are we going to have to start using the talking stick? Yes. To compare that. Donald Trump is about belittling and creating divisiveness within our, okay. uh, with our community. And our topic today is about immigration. Tell me how and he's calling, attacked immigration. Tell me how calling somebody's family Nazis is not belittling. We're talking about. Hold on. We're talking, because you're not going to no, 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 own I, 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 the left's behavior. You're telling me Beto Trump, O'Rourke has I said he's called him a Nazi. Yeah, look when Trump got elected. How many Nazi references for his kids? The one, the one uh, actor that wanted his kid to be locked up with pedophiles, and and this vehement language, this evil, hate-filled language, and then all of a sudden they're they're throwing out hate-filled language, condemning hatred and and violent attacks, and they they don't get it. You're perpetuating no, think, the situation. But, but I think, well, I think it goes back to. When Donald Trump announced for pre- his presidency, he attacked my culture. And let me make it very frank, Eric. You know, I, I don't really know any immediate buddy in my family or any immediate friends that are undocumented, right? I, I don't know anybody. But coming after my culture or my race is insulting to me. So and then he continues when you doing say it. Your he continues. He continues. The, the Latino, the Latino culture, the Latino community. Give me a specific example of him saying. Latinos are the problem. He said. He says we're rapists. He says we're, okay, we're not we're, Latinos. He said there's Mexican dude, drug all, dealers coming across the border. But that's not, rapists but, coming across the border. He he, he, the, he he did not sit there. You don't convolute nah, the two I terms. With Mexican with Hispanic. Okay. Well, we've community. got we've got right, off look, topic here because we're going to we're going to we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about immigration. Stick. We're bringing back our two guests, uh, Jerry T.Z. Pino and Robert uh, Godchild, to talk about immigration next. Ryan Sewing and Vacuum is New Mexico's number one brother dealer. Brother's new Luminaire has a built-in projection system which helps with quilting, embroidering, and sewing. Ryan's has a variety of machines to satisfy quilters, sewers, embroiders, and long armors. We offer the finest vacuums like Mila, Ricard, and Lindhaus. Check out our fantastic selection of fabrics and sewing furniture. We also offer classes, repair, and financing. Drop by our store in Albuquerque and Santa Fe. Ryan Sewing and Vacuum, serving New Mexico for 37 years. I'm Ben Lucero, president and owner of Indigo Mortgage. We are a locally owned and operated mortgage company right here in New Mexico. This means your loan officers and processors are right here to serve you. Indigo Mortgage offers better rates and terms than that of big banks and out-of-state lenders. Our mortgage divisions include residential, commercial, construction, reverse mortgages, and VA mortgage loans. Let us serve you with an exemplary level of care. Indigo Mortgage, because nobody cares more about your mortgage loan. We are connected by rivers, by mountain ranges, by unique culture. But what connects us more than ever? Renewable energy from wind and solar. P&M delivers renewable energy every day to our homes, businesses, and institutions across the state. 
and they are committed to 100% emissions-free energy by 2040. After all, we call this home too. PNM, together for New Mexico. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle with Jeff Apodaca, Eric Strauss. Uh, you can find me on the radio most most days. Most these days, days, driving uh, people I'll be nuts. On, uh, yeah, try, trying to drive people nuts. I'm on News Radio KKOB. Um, Jeff Apodaca, former gubernatorial candidate. Just, I, I think we need to keep letting people know who we are. It's our third episode. It's our third show. Our third, third show. show. And today's show, yep. we're talking about immigration, and we're going to dig yep. right into it because our two guests today is Senator Jerry Ortiz Pino, and uh, and former uh, ICE and Border Patrol agent uh, Bob Gottschall, who's actually mm -hmm. running for state representative now that That's I learned right. yesterday. Awesome. So congratulations. Good luck. Good luck. Um, but starting about immigration, and Eric and I talk a lot about immigration and, and some of the issues down there, and, and we know that we're really we've asked you two to come because, uh, Senator, I know you've been really pushing a lot of the stuff about immigration and some of the things that we should or should not be doing. And then, uh, Bob, we really want to hear your perspective because you lived it down there as a border agent. And I, I've been yep. trying to explain to people, let's not vilify our border agents, our security, our ICE officers. and our, You mean uh, people who are trying to do their job? They're jobs. doing their job. They're okay. just doing their job. Right? Be so, bad to vilify him, probably. Right. But um, Senator, as a senator, of the state of New Mexico, like, what do you see? What, what you know? Everybody calls it a crisis. What, what do you What are you seeing down there? Because I know you've been to Central America. I know you've. Yeah. Been we just down got there. back, in fact, from El Salvador. Right. So. And so, real quick, half of Americans now think immigration is a major problem. Okay, but, and the numbers are going up. Um, so when Jeff says, you know, give us your experience of going out there, and then what's being what What do you think? How do we move forward? Well, I think the first thing to start with is to make a real clear distinction between people who are coming into the country and not following our laws and just coming in and people who are following our laws and presenting themselves at the border and asking for, for, uh, for asylum. asylum. Yeah. And, and the distinction is a crucial one because if, if we were following our own rules, we would not be telling Mexico and Guatemala that you can't let people come up to our borders who are seeking asylum because our rules are to allow people to ask for asylum. Right. And if they've got a good reason, to grant it. So if can we you don't follow our own rules, I don't so know how we can, can expect others. So you can say where they're getting the rule from, and I assume you're talking about the 14th Amendment, or which, what I, rules are we talking, talking about? I'm talking about the, the rules around how we grant asylum. And it is if people voluntarily present themselves and turn themselves into the Border Patrol and say, in my home country, my son was killed by the panadilla, pan, pandillistas, the gangs, my daughter has been threatened with rape by them. I'm trying to find a place where I can bring up my kids safely, so I'm seeking asylum here. That <clears throat> means we should, if we follow our own rules at the border, give them a hearing and decide if there's any verifiable basis and I, th basis and I think, to it. Uh, Senator, I think you hit it right on the head because I, I think when people hear about immigration, they're thinking Mexican people are coming over for work, Mexican people are coming over, which some are doing that. But the crisis we have right now, the, 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 the 900 children that have been separated, the thousands, whatever number it is now, the thousands that we've seen come over are mostly Central Americans, Guatemalans that are coming over yeah. for asylum seekers. And the Senator's right, Eric. Uh, the, uh, the 14th Amendment and, our, and our, 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 our federal laws, our Constitution basically says, if you come and knock on our border and cross over and say, I seek asylum, we have to process it. We have to go through the process. We have, hey, but, yeah, but to that point, um, and I don't think anybody here could disagree, the system is flooded. Uh, video, vid video after video of people just rushing the border. You know, I talked to every rancher down in one part of our state and every one of them to the letter said, there's hundreds of people every day walking through my land and they're demanding cell phones and they're demanding this. It's like, I, I get it, it's the laws, but when we don't recognize the, the system's overwhelmed and flooded, what do, we can't just sit here and, and the backlog of the, the hearings, what do we do with them all? But you know, Eric, for a fraction of what this supposed wall would cost, we could hire we could the hire lawyers, process everybody. the judges, the hearing officers, the people to, to actually follow our own processes. If we're not going to follow our own processes, yes, then people are going to dash across the border first chance they get. But if we give them, when we were in El Salvador this last week, for example, we, we, um, I found out something that I didn't realize, and that is we still have in place a guest worker program. Right. And so people in El Salvador can line up at the U.S. Embassy and apply to, for, for <coughs> permits to be transported legally into this country, to work here, and then to be transported back. It's for a, it's for a specific time period. 
but there are so many more people who are applying that you know it, your chan it's like the national lottery. Your chances are better to buy a lottery ticket than to, to try to, to get if we that. just simply expanded the number of those slots, that would relieve some of the pressure from people but who aren't seeking asylum, they're just seeking a job. Okay, right. but do we have the jobs to give them? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Oh, absolutely. We have zero unemployment. No, I didn't know. Hold on, hold on. Now we're hold on. But so, no, but now we're going to talk draw an to Johnny Beer Can in the middle, who's out of work, struggling to pay the bills. Talk to that guy and say we're going to bring more people okay, into the hold system, on, hold on. and we're going to house them, and we're going to pay for them, and then they're going to. And you're telling me that people aren't overstaying their work. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you, if you have, if you have, are. of course they That's are. But, if you, but if you, if you have open, open uh, work visas. I mean, statistics show. I mean, I looked at I looked at a story today from the the Economist. If you had open work visas around the world, seventy eight trillion dollars to the GDP, you would create so much workforce. I'm just telling you right now. That's what I'm saying. You have to look at those. And I'm thinking of the farmers in California and Arizona that need who can't to, get their. You crops shut here. down work visas in California. You shut down the state of California. It's okay. That look, here, here's the point. There's no way that in the overflooded system you can monitor who's coming in and who's supposed to be well, going out. The, and so that's let's, the bigger let's, issue. Let's go to Bob. There's no let's, laws let's, in let's, place to, let, to protect the but American let's, citizen. Let's go to right Bob. Now. Let's go to Bob because I want to hear. I want to hear because Bob lived it down there as a border patrol ICE agent. Bob, let's hear it from your side because I want. I want to hear your side too because you've lived down there on that on that job. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I, and there's so much to digest here, it's uh, going to be hard to right. get it all out. Yeah. But uh, for the record, I want to say first that I'm an Eagles fan. Oh, that's right. cool. <laughs> How can we get him on the show? <laughs> So uh, I did we spend... Gotta, we we, we, we got yeah, to put him on in the first second. <laughs> <laughs> so I did spend five years as a Border Patrol agent, not exactly on the border. It was in Sierra Blanca, Texas, in Alamogordo. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I did bring a copy of the asylum law, you know, in case anybody's interested in knowing what the asylum law says factually, because there's a lot of uh, misconceptions out there about just what it says, what we can do, what we can't do. But maybe one of the things that should be said is that just because we have an asylum law doesn't mean that it's an open invitation to the citizens of the world to come to this country, because it's not. Right. I mean, there are rules. Right. There are things that you have to uh, adhere to. And people do come here using the asylum laws as a cover for their economic situation. Right. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And, and the, fact, the, the fact remains, though, that because it's really an, uh, there is an asylum process, but the, the asylum process kicks in after a person is arrested. They're arrested according to a, uh, it, what's called an administrative or... Well, I'll have to look that up, but uh, there's a removal process. They're arrested pursuant to that, and that process gives them the right to claim asylum because the process doesn't allow for a judicial review. All right, and, it, it, and this was a process that was instituted under the Clinton administration. Prior to that, the only um, administrative removal that would result in a, uh, a felony return would have to be done before a judge. In the Clinton administration, they instituted some other uh, 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 avenues that allowed for an administrative removal, no judicial review, and the person coming back to the country would still be uh, subjected to a felony prosecution. And I think we all agree that the Obama administration deported more than the Trump administration has well, done. Factual. No, no, no. We, 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 we've, all, we've, all agree, we've all agreed but, to that. But, but how, at the same, hold on, hold on, Eric. Hold, hold on, Eric. I got the I got okay. the talking stick. I'm going to take it next. But but at the my, the point is is it also goes with economics, right? It's just that simple. I mean, we saw a major drop in, in uh, asylum seekers and immigrations in, in illegal uh, um, coming over here in 2006, 2007, 2008. Why? Because our economy tanked. The work jobs here, there are three million jobs today that we can't fill because either we haven't trained Americans for, um, and when you look at economic growth and you look at work visas, it's actually an economic stimulant to the economy. It's that simple. And so when you look at that, just prove to me wrong. I'm, I'm, I, I got, I got, you know, things here. But, but Senator, you know, our, our governor, our, our no. governor. You our, can't just dump. No. Okay. Oh. But I'm going to ask the senator a question. Okay. That's fine. But then I'm going to talk after that. Okay. Okay. Good. Remember, this is their segment. We have two more yes. segments we can talk about. Yes. But the governor pulled off our National Guard. Mm -hmm. 
and basically said there wasn't a crisis. And I don't think it was as bad as it is now than it was when she did that. A lot of people in southern New Mexico were very upset, that. right? Um, where do we stand? Do we think we need the National Guard down there? Well, um, I mean, I, I don't know where we stand. I, I, I never did think we did in the first place. Right. They went down there simply to provide some backup and, and mostly to make it look like we were, you know, Governor Martinez wanted us to look supportive of the Trump administration's decision right. to get tough on, on people coming across. There were never as many Mexicans coming across as there had been for the last 20 years. It's been right. going down steadily because the Mexican economy is relatively is, robust. Is robust. They don't need to come across. They don't have the kind of uh, 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 situations that Guatemala and Honduras and El Salvador have. Incidentally, we were working with uh, asylum seekers when they were uh, still being housed here, they, they, that's pretty much stopped. But there were people from Venezuela, Brazil, uh, Cuba, and uh, even some people from uh, uh, Uruguay and, who and were coming Ro across. Romania, yeah. Romania. All sorts of, yeah. I mean, it was not just Central Americans, but the vast majority were Central Americans. Um, the, the, the situation, I think, is, is one in which we've, we've created more of a crisis because we've, we've, we've blocked off the, the methods for achieving asylum that were established in law. How, how do we solve these problems? How, how, do, we, how, do, we, how do we solve them? I, I, want, I want Robert to okay. respond to that. And um, so do you want Bob or Robert? Bob's fine. Okay, Bob, um, can you respond to that comment by uh, Senator Ortiz about the fact that, you know, they're following our asylum seeking law? Because that's, I think, where the disconnect's happening. Uh, Senator, because I don't think that you exactly can just present yourself and say, I'm asylum, and then get housing and get yeah, medical did. care and get, you know, get get all my kids to come with me. And the, there has to be a better process in place than that, because we'd be flooded. No, I think I mean, they turn themselves in to be arrested. That's what they do. And, they right. and then yeah. they have to be processed. Yes. Right. Yes, exactly. It, but but, but so, we're not doing so, that. Um, uh, and for your viewers, you know, if anybody wants to check what I'm saying or just check the reality of it, you can Google the Immigration Yearbook. Uh, that has all the facts and figures regarding immigration uh, going back to 1820. Uh, you can look at the ebbs and flows of immigration over centuries now. And um, so in, in uh, response to that point, we, we're authorizing about 25,000 asylum uh, approvals on a yearly basis, give or take a couple thousand. You might have 20,000 one year, 30,000 another year, but you can pretty much average it out to about 25,000. Uh, certainly right now, the last couple of years, which I don't know if they have the numbers for right now because it takes a while to put those numbers together, but um, you, you say, I think the last thing I saw was about 80,000 applicants had been authorized, a, a credit, they had been given a credible fear status. Now, the credible fear status doesn't guarantee that anybody's going to get asylum at all. At all. I mean, it's just, it's the uh, officer from, uh, from uh, Citizenship and Immigration Services interviews the applicant, and based on information that they've been able to acquire through uh, State Department reports and maybe other sources, they'll say, well, yeah, it's possible that what this guy is saying uh, comports with what we believe exists in that country. And then, it, then an immigration judge is going to make the decision. But I think and, on, and on, on that point, I think there's over 300,000 uh, people that have come over in the last six months. So I think the system just being o overrun. And one of the things we talked about that, you know, uh, at the federal level, uh, the House and the Senate and even Trump all got together except the four people from the squad. At least now they've uh, uh, approved $4.2 billion of funding to try and relieve some of this stuff because some of the processes, and now the Mexican government, one of the issues down in the Mexico, in Mexican government, the Mexican government is trying to stop some of the Central Americans within their country right. and they send them back. They an entire housing facility but what's also, but what's also in happen, Mexico. But what's also happening too is, if you're a, if, if a non-Spanish speaker, they're actually letting them come through. I mean, that, that's been reported by the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. So there, there's still this, this mad rush here, but I, I wanna get to solutions. Well, yeah. to, to be, to, so if, your if we're going to find us throw money at the problem, correct? Well, n no, not just that, because if we're going to find a solution, we have to find out what is the cause of what's going on right mm -hmm. now. And there are three things, that basically, that are going on. And uh, we were just down there and talking to people, and, and it's pretty clear. The gang problem, and, and let's be clear, these are American gangs. Mara Salvatrucha Trece is a North American gang. 
Avenida 18 as an American gang. We deported them, and they played havoc with those societies down there because they weren't ready for gangs like this, vicious gangs without any family members. I mean, th they have no of the normal social controls that serve to regulate or moderate in any way the viciousness of, of street gangs. So these are very vicious gangs, and they, they run rampant down there. So they've taken people's land, they've taken people's property, they've killed their kids, they've raped their daughters, and so there's a genuine and a reality-based fear of the gangs. Now, but why aren't those government? Imported those gangs to we their deported country. We deported them. We so, deported but, them. <laughs> we you, sent them. They so were started you, here by by people from those countries who were here, and then. So the you're saying kids, that that America is to blame for the gangs in South America? That's not what you said at all. I, well, I'm it saying, is. I'm that saying that these are American gangs. No, these, these, these are gangs that, that normally would be controlled in America. No, because I'm reading yeah, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. Normal gangs that would be controlled in America yes. were deported. Yeah. Instead of controlling South them, because we we're it's our, you're you're saying that like, are you kind of picturing us like a Fidel Castro who took all his miscreants, yeah, exactly. shipped them on a boat over to America? That's what I'm saying. So yeah. did somebody import those gangs to us? No, they were not they gangs saw, when they came here. We made them gangs. We made them gangs. Yes, yes. we put them in neighborhoods how? where the American gangs. How, well, how did they gain their power? Selling drugs yeah, by being very vicious. Where did they get the drugs from? No, they weren't selling drugs. Well, where they, are they, what's their income stream? They, they don't make their money from drugs. They make their money from That's impossible. extortion. They, have to have they a, make their money from extortion. extortion. I, they're I, like the mafia, not like, not like the narco So are you saying you, right I now think you're there confusing. are no homegrown South American gangs with drug lords? I'm not <laughs> saying drugs. I'm talking about the vicious street youth gangs. I'm making that, a uh, distinction uh, that you're Eric, missing. Eric, that's been you're going missing on the distinction, Eric. Right. I, I just that's find it. I find it just. No, I say I say street gang. You hear we deported, that we deported gangs and caused the situation yes. in South America. That's absolutely right. That is not, not in absolutely. South America. In, in, in Central America. Central in Honduras. America. It, it's it's oh, hey, hold on for absolutely insane. We got to go to we got to go to commercial breaks. It's, it's reality. Go, it's history. We got to go to commercial break. And if break. you won't listen to history, you'll never Jerry, meet in the middle. Jerry, we'll, we're going to go to commercial okay. break, and we we'll write right back with our guests. Thank okay. you. I, I'm Ben Lucero, president and owner of Indigo Mortgage. We are a locally owned and operated mortgage company right here in New Mexico. This means your loan officers and processors are right here to serve you. Indigo Mortgage offers better rates and terms than that of big banks and out-of-state lenders. Our mortgage divisions include residential, commercial, construction, reverse mortgages, and VA mortgage loans. Let us serve you with an exemplary level of care. Indigo Mortgage because nobody cares more about your mortgage loan. We are connected by rivers, by mountain ranges, by unique culture. But what connects us more than ever? Renewable energy from wind and solar. P&M delivers renewable energy every day to our homes, businesses, and institutions across the state. And they are committed to 100% emissions-free energy by 2040. After all, we call this home too. P&M, together for New Mexico. Ryan Sewing and Vacuum is New Mexico's number one brother dealer. Brother's new Luminaire has a built-in projection system which helps with quilting, embroidering, and sewing. Ryan's has a variety of machines to satisfy quilters, sewers, embroiders, and long armors. We offer the finest vacuums like Mila, Ricar, and Lindhouse. Check out our fantastic selection of fabrics and sewing furniture. We also offer classes, repair, and financing. Drop by our store in Albuquerque and Santa Fe. Ryan Sewing and Vacuum, serving New Mexico for 37 years. Thanks, everybody, for coming back. We're sitting here today talking about immigration with Senator Jerry Ortiz Pino and former uh, ICE agent and Border Patrol and state uh, running for state yeah. representative Bob Godsell. Uh, we were, uh, Senator, we were talking about this. Now, I, I wanted, hold on, hold on. Hang on. I oh. wanted Bob to respond because he had and a good he response. Said, he had a good response. Yeah, because uh, on one level, uh, Senator Ortiz Pino is right on the gangs and the extortion. But on the other level, I, I just I think it's oversimplifying the gang problem in Central America. But go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I, I don't think that there is any doubt that he's right about the violence and and where, you know, we had a large influx of Salvadoran nationals come into the United States in the 80s. Uh, and, Refugees from the war. Uh, well, I don't know necessarily that I would agree with that. But again, it was another, whether we're talking asylum or economic uh, refugees. And a lot of people came here looking for work. I mean, that this is what is always going on with this country. People are coming here looking for jobs. Right. right. And, it, and, you know, it was the foundation of the Immigration Reform and Control Act. But uh, 
a lot of these uh, organizations do get involved in drug trafficking also. I mean, you can only make, as, as a lot of other organizations found out, you can only make so much money Extorting from certain poor types pe poor of people. <laughs> uh, illegal activity when, and, when, and then the, the, uh, the ease and the, and, the, and the wealth that comes with drug trafficking. I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, we, we've worked a number of organizations in this area, MS-13, Serenia-13. Yeah. So let, let me, let me, so let me, let me just, hold on. Just hold on, to hold clarify on. my point. Okay. Uh, maybe they began extorting poor people, but you ain't going to make millions of dollars and recruit more gang people by extorting poor people. You are going to find an income stream, and the easiest, most readily available income stream is illegal drugs. Okay, but you say that. But the senator's correct and Bob's correct. Let me tell you what's the, 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 the economy has exploded in El Paso and has grown in El Paso mostly because of Mexican money and Mexican businesses that have moved over from Juarez to the east side and have exploded that economy because those gangs were extorting small businesses, were killing businesses. Businesses were advertising on TV. I did business down there. They would advertise on TV. They started getting extorted. So businesses started closing up in Juarez and literally moved out Paso. So the senator's completely right on that. So it's not just drugs. To a point. It's not just drugs. And so what I'm saying is, is if we're going to try and kind of meet in the middle and, and find some, some issues here, the issue is the number one thing I'm hearing is jobs. And we've always talked about that. People come to this country because of jobs and economic opportunities. And so what we have to do as a country, okay, both at a but, national but level and a also, state level. They also come not just for jobs but to carry out illegal activity. If we're leaving that part of the equation out, we're not painting a whole picture. You can't tell me everybody coming here just wants to be the hardworking guy, laying brick for every day. That's not a, a clear picture. I would picture. say 95% of the people come here are Okay, in that then group. even 5% you have to agree on. I understand that. So we're our not going to take our country, the illegal activity off the table because you guys are trying to paint this peaceful we've immigrant never, picture. We've, we've, never said well, take you, the, we've never said take it off the well, table. Well, you are kind of. I've never said that. You're the, saying, saying, the senator never said that. You're saying he said that, that's one of the you're issues. You're just trying to paint that jobs is the number one issue. It's also to make money in an opportunistic criminal environment. Uh, that's we're, we're part to, of the, the problem. The goal about this topic today is how do we come up with solutions and ideas Correct. for what's going on today? We can complain about all we want. We, we can sit here and say, First five, of all, we hold on, to, hold on. We can say 5%. 5% of the people coming well, over that, are criminals. That's your number. Well, okay. That's your number. Let's say it's 20%. Okay. Okay. I understand that. But 80% of the people are not. They're coming over because of either issues in Central America. Correct. They're leaving their home I'll countries. I'll agree with you on that. They're leaving their home countries for job opportunities. So, so let's talk about this in this segment because we're going to have to wrap it up in about eight minutes. But in this segment, I really want to come up with some ideas. Let's come up with some ideas because that's what we've talked about, Eric. Is that how do we come up with some ideas? Well, so, there, I've, got, I've got three because the other two issues going on right now we wouldn't have even time to get on that are driving people up are the, the incredible pressure that, that people are feeling from climate change down there. Right. The rainfall has dropped significantly. The wells are drying up. People who even, even those who have land aren't able to grow enough to grow. So they're, they're just being squeezed out by that. And then the other thing is the, 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 the remnants of the Civil War that we helped wage for 12 years, 13 years, from 1980 to 1918, 1992, those 12 years, that the repercussions of that violence are still going on down there in that people uh, lost land or they were relocated or they lost the business that was employing them. So those three things are driving people to find some opportunity elsewhere. And if, if the economy in El Salvador were as robust as Mexico's, we wouldn't have, Would we have this issue? pressure. So, so the economy, we, wouldn't, we also wouldn't as have the senator, gangs, because the gangs are, are offering an, op an option that exists nowhere else. As a senator, what can you do f to help re resolve some of this situation? Well, it's very hard as a state senator. Right. I mean, if, if, if I had some, I mean, what we really need to be doing is finding some way to boost the economy down there. And, and, and one of the ways would be to, to do this uh, guest worker program that I didn't even know existed till last week. I thought it was just for braceros, for Mexicans. But it really is a, a way that we could employ, you know, probably a couple hundred thousand Salvadorans, Guatemalans, and Honduras in we, our agricultural industry. We actually have a work program at the national level that on average is about 150,000 work visas a year. And I've always said you could literally double or triple that. Yeah, yeah. And you bring and you target workers that are the skilled, uh, the workers that we need. Yeah. Bob, what's your thoughts? 
Yeah, well, I, give I, us I, some I, solutions, some ideas, because so, you work down there. What would you see that could help solve some of this problem? First off, I'm a little bit leery about the whole idea of foreign aid to these countries because this is something that we engaged in to a large degree with Mexico in the 1960s, and the Mexican government just fleeced us. You know, the money that went down there to help people, it went to politicians. It's one of the reasons why we don't have a Bracero program now. It's not because so many of them stayed here illegally or anything like that. It's because they set up a system where the money would go to a third party before it got to the actual worker to ensure that the worker returned to his country. Well, they got fleeced too. You know, the banks took some of that money. Um, you know, the problem is corruption. If you want to have to deal with foreign governments. And, on some of the local and the domestic issues, when you have, I mean, it's, you have to be careful about your laws of supply and demand. If you have a large supply of laborers, well, then that's going to drive down the cost. And you look at, that's why we have some of the pressures to raise minimum wage in this country, because there is so much unskilled labor in this country that is depressing wages. Whereas on the other end of the scale, there are literally millions of jobs that are going begging and they are high paying jobs. Yep. So, and, and so the, my, my whole point is this, if you're into this guest worker program, you can't have that without having a better, tighter control over when your guest invitation is over, you need to go back home. Mm -hmm. And that comes from tightening regulations on the corporations and the businesses hiring these people or taking these people on and then allowing people to overstay and then undercutting the minimum wage because they'll work cash under the table because I'm undocumented and it depletes the entire economy and it sucks off, which you keep saying an immigrant is such a boost to our economy. They, they, you're talking schooling, you're talking dental, medical, housing, you're talking just alone think what it takes to raise a kid in this country and then you have an immigrant coming in overstaying a visa how are they paying for their kids education who's paying so, for it so we can we can talk more about that but I, I get all I get all that but at the same time it's about solutions correct and we and so people you have our, to country, tighten, our country our country look 25 percent 25 percent of Europe came to this country 200 years ago, 25% of Europe left that country because of issues. Now, I think the senator's correct on this because I've always said this. The reason people come to the United States, or the reason we're seeing, and by the way, it's not just the United States, it's all over the oh, world. all over the world. It's all over the world. Exactly. But the reason, you're see, the reason you're seeing it is government depression from different countries and, and some of our policies that we've done in Central America. You've seen job opportunities, and you are correct, climate change, because you are seeing climate change that's affecting, and then the corruption takes over, and so you have these families down there that are coming I, different places. I, I'm sorry, the climate change argument is... Well, weird. you're seeing, what, what so, I'm saying is you're seeing shifting countries. It may not be affecting us here in the United the States. The climate constantly changes. But it should, well, but it's... The and, climate has and, always changed. There's and, always and been it, drought. And through... There's two, been, the Great Depression was at the climate change. And I through mean, 2,000 years, let's, countries, let's be people have moved about around the world. Change. That, and, and migration has happened in the history of man that's right. in terms of climate, but that's not what's going on it here. Exactly part, well, part of the problem is, is the, the mere foundation of the government of these Central American countries. And until you fix the governments, because they want this socialist. But hold on. But hold on. At one point, you're saying we got to go fix those governments, but at the I'm other point, I'm not saying to fix the governments. Saying, I'm saying the governments, as long as you have these dictators in charge and the people themselves just use the runaway so, from the problem strategy, you'll never get your country back on track. Well, but you just made a, an enormous leap, and that is by saying these countries are socialist. None of these countries are socialist. These are countries that are as right wing as you are. These are countries well, whose I'm governments. Right wing. These I'm as middle well, as you can get. Well, okay. Well, I, I, I take, I take well, offense to you. Well, then, these countries are as but conservative. But don't call me right wing. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Then I didn't. I don't know you well enough to know. Right. That. I made an assumption because yeah. you seem to react to thinking they were socialists. These are very conservative governments. These are governments that, ju that in terms of their ideology, are just as hands off government hands off as, and that's why there are so many problems because the government doesn't try to solve any of the local problems. They say government. That's that the government is to protect protect the wealthy and their interest. That's what, okay, so, that's what so, Honduras, El okay, Salvador, that, and Guatemala that's says. That's definitely how, not true. How that much is. influence does the United States have with those countries' governments now? 
as far well, right as now, moderating. The, and you're going to get mad at this, but right now the Trump administration has cut back. Our government has cut back a lot of the funding. That's one of the issues we're having in Central America right now is, is our government has cut back a lot of the funding that we used to give them. And so those governments are, are now tightening down. And so it's the poor people down at the bottom that are getting squeezed out. Yeah. And that's why they're coming here. These aren't socialist it's, countries. Oh, by okay, any so they don't have socialized medicine? No. Oh, okay. No, I mean so they it's a don't. free market healthcare system. Basically, so, if you, yeah. but, but so the poor have nothing. Hmm. The poor have no healthcare. I, I, I'm going to take exception to that, but we'll when well, we we'll do some research yeah, and, and yeah. follow yeah. We, we up just on came it. back from El Salvador. We're sending two hundred dollars a month down to to uh, help a one anyway, family with Bob. Uh, we got about thirty problems. seconds left. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you'd like to cover real quick? Yeah. Well, I, I would like for viewers to know that uh, we take in a million immigrants on an average, on, on a yearly basis on average. And, as, and that, this has been happening since 1989. So you can say 30 million immigrants. As far as, you know, to some extent we've talked about what, what can we do externally and what can we do internally. I don't know that we can have a whole lot of impact externally, but if we're taking in a million immigrants a year, why can't we enforce our immigration laws? Anyway, thank you guys so much. Senator, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, Bob, thank, thank you, you so Senator. much, and good luck on your guys' run. Good, good luck you. on your run, too. Thank, thank you. you guys so yeah, much. Thank Appreciate you guys. It. We'll be back after this. I'm Ben Lucero, president and owner of Indigo Mortgage. We are a locally owned and operated mortgage company right here in New Mexico. This means your loan officers and processors are right here to serve you. Indigo Mortgage offers better rates and terms than that of big banks and out-of-state lenders. Our mortgage divisions include residential, commercial, construction, reverse mortgages, and VA mortgage loans. Let us serve you with an exemplary level of care. Indigo Mortgage, because nobody cares more about your mortgage loan. We are connected by rivers, by mountain ranges, by unique culture. But what connects us more than ever? Renewable energy from wind and solar, P&M delivers renewable energy every day to our homes, businesses, and institutions across the state. And they are committed to 100% emissions-free energy by 2040. After all, we call this home too. P&M, together for New Mexico. Ryan Sewing and Vacuum is New Mexico's number one brother dealer. Brother's new Luminaire has a built-in projection system which helps with quilting, embroidering, and sewing. Ryan's has a variety of machines to satisfy quilters, sewers, embroiders, and long armors. We offer the finest vacuums like Mila, Ricar, and Lindhouse. Check out our fantastic selection of fabrics and sewing furniture. We also offer classes, repair, and financing. Drop by our store in Albuquerque and Santa Fe. Ryan Sewing and Vacuum, serving New Mexico for 37 years. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle. I, We're going to have a hard time getting in the middle. I'm not done talking. Give me a second. Eric Strauss, your host. Jeff Apodaca needing to use the talking stick. Co-host. We're going to have disagreement. Out, off air, somebody asked us if we're, uh, how are you guys friends? And we, I don't even want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, we're going to have disagreements on this show. Ortiz E. Pino seems like a, a really lovely guy, and I don't judge him by his views, and hopefully he's smart enough not to judge well, me. I, and it, we have to conversate. I agree. But and I did I think, learn but, something but from I think, him. I, I think you blowing up, it's all about the gangs that he was saying, which he wasn't saying that. He, that was one well, of no, the Well, no, he said three points. I wrote him down. Right, and that was part of it. I, part of it. Climate so change. You're, 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 you're seeing you're, what he talked about, and I agree with this. Worldwide, you're seeing total migration from different countries to other opportunity countries because of climate change issues. Now, you can blame it on whatever you want to blame it on, but Central America, some of the government policies that we put in play and some of the job, lack of job opportunities have now moved back over here, and that's why they're coming in. So just to summarize, he gave three reasons. Gangs was one of the reasons. Was one of that's the reasons. 30% of his reasons, by the way. But well, number two was climate change, mm -hmm. and number three was a 12-year civil war waged by America. He didn't say America within that country no, that we wage, help fund. That we help the, fund, though. Well, but we help fund as we do as we've done in the Middle East. But no, let's take away this. Okay. The, the point is, is can we meet somewhere in the middle? We, yes. we we all agree that we have a crisis down at the border. Okay. So that we, that we all agree with that. Okay. Good. We all so, agree that you know building a wall is probably, and even Trump start talking about stops and stop talking about building a wall. 
But everybody's coming here because of economic growth. People in New Mexico, New Mexicans are leaving our state because we don't have economic opportunities. They're going to other states. Other countries are trying to come here. So our point is, is whether it's climate change, the climate, the climates are changing in their country. They can't farm anymore. Well, then why doesn't the same thing here? We're but in my, the same but my planet. Point, but my point is, <laughs> we're on the same planet, but dude, there's a lot of different things. But, you, but you, it's because, you, you, I'll tell you one of the things you're oversimplifying is, it's their government structure. And the problem really is that backward thinking, dictator run country where people are willing to live under that type of government without causing a revolution and rising up against those governments. And that's another situation which leads, which leads us down other rabbit holes I don't want to go down. Right. But, the, the real problem is if America doesn't have the resources, right, people wouldn't want to come here. We live under the same planet. Are you telling me we're just managing our climate better than other countries are? No, it's just the climate change down there. When you look at economic growth down there, it's farming, it's agriculture, it's opportunities. Um, those opportunities are going away. So you're seeing those countries. It's, it's, it's happened through, but, through but, centuries. But one of the, By the major way, reasons that people seek asylum is not because they're going to die of hunger. They were they were blaming it on their safety. Like I can't go back. I'll get killed. But that's tr that's right? true in a lot of these cases. But they're coming right. here for economic growth. But hold on. Let, let's just. Okay. But what we can agree on. Okay. Is we know that there's job work visa programs. Now you don't think there's enough jobs here. I'm uh, okay. I am fine with the job work visa program. My meet in the middle point to that is, and I'll, I'll concede to your job work visa program, as long as there is a way to monitor people when their visas expire to go back home or a company is penalized for hiring people whose visas are expired. Right. And they have, and by the way, and uh, if you can't tighten that system up, which without making it a racist statement, the federal that, government that, has right? a verif uh, the federal government has a verif verified e-verifier, e but it's not, e -verifier, that not if as every, strong as it should be. If every company used it, e-verify would not work Not enforced fine. As, as it should be, right? Uh, all my companies have always used it. Okay, but clearly not enforced as it should be. If we can agree with every, that. We agree with that. I mean, look at, what, look at the articles just right. about Walmart. Right. Locking people in, right? Right. And this is part of the problem. Illegal immigration hurts the immigrant, it hurts the country, and it hurts the economy. If we could come See, to the middle. this is where we're going to disagree. Well, listen. I, I think I just gave illegal, you an article. I illegal, just gave illegal, you an, I just illegal, gave you an, ar an argument. Illegal. Okay. Illegal immigration. People running across the border. If you can find a process to manage it, work visa program, fine. How are you going to monitor when people's, how many people are here because of work visa? We got to wrap up the show. Guy, so we're going to commercial break. We'll be back to wrap up this week's show. It's Thanks for time. hanging in there. We are connected by rivers, by mountain ranges, by unique culture. But what connects us more than ever? Renewable energy from wind and solar P&M delivers renewable energy every day to our homes, businesses, and institutions across the state. And they are committed to 100% emissions-free energy by 2040. After all, we call this home too. P&M, together for New Mexico. Ryan Sewing and Vacuum is New Mexico's number one brother dealer. Brother's new Luminaire has a built-in projection system which helps with quilting, embroidering, and sewing. Ryan's has a variety of machines to satisfy quilters, sewers, embroiders, and long armors. We offer the finest vacuums like Mila, Ricard, and Lindhouse. Check out our fantastic selection of fabrics and sewing furniture. We also offer classes, repair, and financing. Drop by our store in Albuquerque and Santa Fe. Ryan Sewing and Vacuum, serving New Mexico. I'm Ben Lucero, president and owner of Indigo Mortgage. We are a locally owned and operated mortgage company right here in New Mexico. This means your loan officers and processors are right here to serve you. Indigo Mortgage offers better rates and terms than that of big banks and out-of-state lenders. Our mortgage divisions include residential, commercial, construction, reverse mortgages, and VA mortgage loans. Let us serve you with an exemplary level of care. Indigo Mortgage, because nobody cares more about your mortgage loan. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle. Eric Strauss, Jeff Apodaca. It's Whew. been a feisty show. We're going to disagree, and we're still going to like each other. Well, kind of. No, I like <laughs> we'll still meet. We'll still meet at the kitchen, and, yes. and I still will not well, eat. Where, where, I, what's I, the future of America if we can't have different opinions? No, I think that's the whole point, and I think the point of the show today is, look, we know there's differences here, 
But we have to look at common ground, and the common ground is how can we expand our yeah. work visa program? How can we work with countries now, and work with them on that? And, and Senator P. Ortiz Pino really saw that as a way. I'm fine with that as long as we can find a way to monitor when people's visas run. And I think E-Verify, I think our, our, our system is overwhelmed right now because of the things that are going on. So I think there's there's opportunities there. So what I'm saying is is all of us have to work with our U.S. Senators, our Congress, because this has to happen at a federal level. Yes. Because we'll, the resources down in Deming and everything else are going to be going that direction. We need to work on We need on to demand a system. We need to demand organization. We need to demand that immigrants are treated respectfully while at the same time following And our we didn't laws. cover this. Can we agree on we that? We agree with that. Okay. And another thing is we have to look at technology companies, medical companies, insurance companies that are making money off us, that are paying not enough taxes, paying those taxes and those resources to help create jobs and economic growth within our communities and outside our communities, because I think that's another way we can look at economic growth. What's coming up next week? Next week, we're going to be talking about um, another easy topic is uh, crime and poverty not and, and, New, that's, and, that's and New Mexico, be, and New Mexico not an easy issues. Topic. That's going to be a seriously hard topic to get through. But that's through. what this show's about. We're thank not thank PNM, Indigo Mortgage, Ryan Sohn, Vacuum. Thank you for our, our sponsors. sponsors. Thank you for our sponsors. If you're interested in sponsoring the show, reach out to us on Facebook. Uh, follow me on Twitter at House 770 Strauss. Uh, follow me at uh, New Mexico uh, Minute and uh, Democrats for Democracy and go out and make a difference. Boom. Boom. Find us on Facebook at Let's Meet in the Middle, or you can email us at meetinthemiddlenm at gmail.com. This is a production of the Sun Broadcasting Network.